I'm David Handley with the University of Maine Cooperative Extension and today we're going to talk about pruning raspberries. Now the proper time to prune raspberries is really any time after they go dormant. So this can happen any time from November right through March. Personally I prefer to do it in the late winter, early spring in March. Uh, this is because as the older canes are dying they're sending sugars and carbohydrates and nutrients back down to the root system which will help next year's canes get through the winter. Now, when we're pruning raspberries, we're looking to accomplish three things. We can do them at the same time, but I'll lay them out for you. The first is that we're going to narrow up the row, because every year the raspberry rows tend to get wider and wider, and we want to narrow that row up to about two feet to one and a half feet wide. The second thing we want to do is get rid of all of the canes that fruited last year. These are called spent flora canes. Fruiting canes that have already fruited. These canes are dead. They're just getting in the way and taking up space, so all of those are going to come out. Then the final thing we're going to do is thin the remaining canes such that there's only three or four canes per linear foot. Okay, so this is going to look very thin when we're all done. We're going to be taking out the majority of the canes that you see here now. As you approach the planting, you'll notice there are really three kinds of canes that you're dealing with. First are those spent flora canes that we talked about. These have gray peeling bark and they also have these remains of little branches on them that we call the fruiting laterals. Any cane that's showing this gray peeling bark and has these old fruiting shoots on them should come out. These canes are dead anyway. When you cut into them, you'll see there's nothing but brown wood in there. There's no green tissue, living tissue at all. All of these come out. The next type of cane you'll run into are a lot of weak spindly canes. Very thin, very short. They don't reach the trellis wires, which we'll see in a minute. Uh, these just aren't going to produce very good fruit. If they're thin and short like this, all of these should come out as well. Finally, and hopefully, we're going to have a good selection of nice, thick fruiting canes. These, if you peel the bark back a little bit, you'll see they have green shoots. You'll notice that instead of the fruiting laterals that we saw on the spent flora canes, these just have buds. Now, in the springtime, these buds are going to break and give us fruiting shoots, and that's our crop for that next year. So this is what we want to keep, and we want to look for the thickest basal diameter, in other words, the thickest stems, and good height. Okay, so that they'll reach the trellis wire and we can attach them. So these are the ones we want to save as long as they are within that two foot width parameter that we've set up for ourselves. Now you can see here, here's a raspberry row. This variety happens to be Boyne, one of my favorite varieties. And you can see the row width here has gone out to three, even four feet, even though we started with a row that was only a couple feet wide. And that's because the new shoots as they came up during the summer were looking for light and less competition. So they're getting out here, we don't want them. If we allow these canes to go ahead and leaf out next year, they're going to be shading out all the canes in the middle, and I'll have lots of fruit rot problems, and I won't want to have to reach in there through all these thorny canes to harvest that fruit, so I'll lose a lot of it. So initially, using some nice sharp loppers and some good thick gloves, because these are thorny, and I always like to wear safety glasses because these are thorns and there's sticks running around your face all over the place. We can get started just cutting them right at the base. And as you're cutting, you can just pull those canes that you've cut out of the way, throw them into the row middle so that you can collect them later. We're not going to leave these behind because these can be a source of disease problems for us next year. So everything we cut out when we're all done is going to be dragged out of here and put either chopped up and put into the compost pile or burned or taken to the local dump, but not left here. Okay, now that we've got this row pruned, you can see how narrow the base is. We're trying to keep that row, ba uh, row width at the base about to a foot and a half to two feet wide. And then you can see our trellis wires at about four feet are spread to about three and a half feet wide. And what we're going to do with the nice canes that we left behind is attach them to this trellis wire. Now what you use to attach them is really uh, whatever works best for you. Old bread twist ties work pretty well. Just take that cane wrap the twist tie around it and get it on fairly tight so that the wind's not going to be able to blow it around too much. There are some other things you can buy that have recently become popular. Here are some little uh, rubber bands with a little T on the end of them that can be used. And In this case you just grab it, bring the rubber band around and that little T just grabs the other end of the rubber band so that holds fairly well. Works better on thicker canes. If you're a home gardener and like to grow vegetables, you're probably familiar with different types of tomato clips. These are just little plastic rings that you can use to clip plants on. And these will also work fairly well. We just take a cane, clip both the wire in the cane, and leave it there. And that's just so that the cane can't be allowed to bounce back into the middle. And also, 
we have machines that will do this for you. These are called tapeners or tappeners. And in this case, you just grab the cane and you put a little piece of plastic over it and it works like a staple gun. You just grab that and then the staple clits it, releases it, and gives you a little piece that holds on to the cane pretty well there. These are fast and relatively efficient, but you have to buy a lot of tape and a lot of staples for them. And because they're plastic, they will be here for a long time. Remember, we're going to take these off next year after these canes are fruited because we'll be pruning them out. And you'll have lots of little bits of plastic to deal with. So one way to get around that is to use the old-fashioned method, which is just using some baling twine or cotton string, whatever's available to you, and just taking the canes, spreading them to the wire, and just giving them a simple knot, either a slip knot or a granny knot or a square knot, anything works pretty well. Just grab both the cane and the trellis wire. And what I like about these is that you can get it fairly tight, it's fast, if you fill your pocket full of little bits of string cut to 8 or 10 inches, and then next year when I'm going to prune this out, I can just clip this off with a pair of scissors and it will fall to the ground, it will biodegrade, I don't have to worry about plastic all over the place. Now the idea here is we're going to attach all of these to the trellis wire to spread these canes out such that here we're going to have them spread out to three feet at the base or a foot and a half and when we're all done we should have a nice V effect that's going to allow the sun to come down and uh, provide plenty of light and air movement through this planting uh, to make sure that we're not going to have a lot of disease problems. The other thing this is going to do is put all of our fruiting canes on the outside and then our new canes that will fruit next year are going to be coming up in the middle where we want them and we won't have to fight our way through those thorny prima canes to get to our fruiting canes. So let's tie these up and take a good look at what the finished product should look like. You can see we finished pruning. We've left only the prima canes from last year. We've taken out all those dead flora canes. We've removed all the scrawny growth. We've narrowed up the base of the plant, so that uh, the row planting, so we're only about two feet wide at the base. And we've spread them out to about three feet up towards the tops of the canes. So if you look down the row, you see we have this lovely V effect, and that's just what you want to see in a raspberry planting. Now, I like to leave the tops on. Some people like to ask, shouldn't I tip the raspberry planting and cut the tips off? Well, the fact is that if you do that, you're cutting off all these buds that are going to be fruiting laterals for you next year. If your canes are so tall that you're not going to be able to reach them or they're going to bend over the, the wire, you can trim back a little bit. Just remember this rule of thumb. If you cut off more than 25% of the cane tip, you're seriously reducing your yield. So our planting is good to go. We're all set for the winter and we're going to have a real good crop on this for next year and we'll be ready to set up for a good summer of raspberries.